Research shows that one in five organizations worldwide are now infected by malware distributed by social media. This is because of the increased use and appreciation of social networks in virtually every sector of our lives. Banks, governments, and educational institutions have incorporated the use of social media sites to improve their reach, making sites such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram a fertile ground for cyber criminals. Some of the most popular social media attacks include an Nigerian print, charity funds, blackmailing, scam, and social hijacking. Michael Shile has more on how to detect and guard against being victims of these kinds of attacks. Welcome to Privacy Notes, the podcast. Now, this is the platform where we talk to you and tell you things, everything about cybersecurity data protection in general. In today's episode, we'll be looking at how you can detect and check with the various types of social media cyber crimes. Coming from last week, we spoke about the epidemic of scam phone calls and the reactions have been amazing. I mean, it's been a lot. The people have come in with different testimonials and experiences they had to relate with us, especially on our social media platform. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe and share privacy notes. Okay, so today, I don't have Urena here with me. It's just me in the house. That is, my name is still Michael Olugbe Ngashile. But I won't be doing this alone. I'm going to be bringing an expert in house. Um, he's not here with us, but he's going to be calling in. His name is Mr. Rokadote. Mr. Rokadote is actually the Director of Operations at International Electronic Services. He's a cybersecurity expert. And, of course, if you just even do a little search on his name, you get to see a lot of what he has been doing so far in the space of cybersecurity. So I could say, yes, he's actually an expert in this cybersecurity space. All right, um, in today's episode, we'll be looking at talking points from the topic, social media cyber crimes. We'll be looking at a quick history or insight into the advent of social media cyber crimes, especially in Nigeria as our point of focus. We'll be looking at what are the tools the cyber criminals use. How do they gain access to their victim social account? There have been cases of where we hear people that their Facebook accounts are hacked, their Instagram accounts are hacked, their Twitter accounts are hacked, and someone else impersonates them and begins to reach out to their contacts and send all sorts of fraudulent messages. And unfortunately, a lot of people keep falling for this. I have a first-hand experience of someone I know personally whose uh, Facebook account was hacked and who began to reach out to her contact and even asking them for money, telling them invest in this, invest in that. And um, because they trust her and they knew that, look, if social person is the one sending this message, that means it's definitely legit or it's genuine. And they began to actually respond to that and huh, they were milked off in different, I mean, terrible ways eventually. So we're looking at what tools do these guys actually use to gain access to their victim social media accounts. Now we'll be looking at also if you become a victim of this social media media cyber crime in the event that your Facebook account or your Instagram your any whatever social media handle you have if your accounts are hacked what do you need to do in the first how do you prevent yourself from being hacked what do you need to do to ensure you're secure or immune to the cyber crimes that if you can actually even be immune that is and also if you become a victim what do you need to do I mean when you get hacked on that and also we'll look at it and examples of few cyber social media attacks that have happened in the past a few examples of them and how did these things actually happen I'll we'll try to relate all this and wrap it up in relation to data protection at large. When we return, we'll be talking more about this. This is still Privacy Notes, the podcast brought to you by Taxi Technologies and the NDPR Academy. We'll be back in a moment. And we are back. This is the Privacy Notes brought to you by Tax A Technologies Limited, Tax Tech, and the NDPR Academy. Tax Tech is your plug when it comes to provision of cybersecurity services, data protection compliance service, and of course, software development services. While well, NDPR Academy is a training arm that actually trains you on all you need to know about data protection. That is what Privacy Note basically is all about. So we try to project this information to you out there as much as we can. Like I mentioned earlier on, I have a guest on today's show. He's going to be calling in. His name is Mr. Rock Adote and he's going to be giving us some insight into social media cyber crimes and how we can detect and check with them. So we're going to be looking at case studies and life case scenarios that have happened in this space over time. Okay, so I have here with me Mr. Rock Adote. Mr. Rock Adote is the Director of Operations at, at International Electronic Services. Um, there is a cybersecurity expert and also a data protection 
compliance consultant. Um, so we're going to be asking a few questions, uh, like I uh, briefed you all earlier on the talking points, uh, basically about five of them. But we'll just run through very quickly and get uh, Mr. Rock Adote's insight from an expert point of view. So, Mr. Adote, can you just um, tell us very quickly about the brief history of um, the advent of social media cyber crimes, especially in Nigeria? Just in a few lines, please. Thank you, um, for the opportunity. You're for welcome, sir. Thing. In response to your questions, I'll be very concise. Yes. The advent of social media cyber crimes in Nigeria has been a situation that has been growing over the years mm. uh, in relation to the technique we see. Mm. Um, cyber criminals used to exploit um, systems, yes. exploit persons, mm. not necessarily technical also. Mm. Even non-technical means such as social engineering, which is a common word in the world of cyber security. To be more specific, we have the inception of social media in Nigeria, and we witness techniques such as um, digital impersonation, mm. identity theft, you understand, yes. cyberbullying. Mm. Even, uh, we even, there was even a case of a scene here then, and some of our friends on social media lured her and yes. this to a hotel at the end of the day she died. Yes, she was killed. And this was murdered. a common case in the entire country. You understand? So there are so many um, perspectives towards um, social media, um, um, uh, cyber um, crimes, social media cyber crimes in Nigeria. But more importantly and very precisely, one of the most notable ones which is still um, giving us, giving in, I would like for anti-graft agencies and the latest headache, the problem of digital impersonation and mm -hmm. identity theft. Identity theft. Um, uh, for example, you have Whiskey that has like 20 um, social media accounts. You don't mm -hmm. know who is Whiskey. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. When you're talking to persons, All right. you understand? Yes. So that so. creates a lot of challenge. And that's, mm -hmm. Yeah, complex case for this. All right. Um, to address this challenge, but a uh, notable one of is the implementation of lawful interception in Nigeria, yeah. which is not limited in its scope to just solve social media related cyber crimes or even um, hate speech, fake news. You understand? So, um, lawful interception, if you say something against the president, yes. you understand? Yes. So, these are measures that are in. Um, we're experiencing the beat of a network challenge there, so we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Mr. Rokaduti is still here with us. This is still Privacy Notes brought to you by Taxi Technologies Tax Tech and the NDPR Academy. Okay, and we're back. Uh, we still have Rock Hadote here with us. Um, meanwhile, remember, you could actually check us out on social media, Tax Tech, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and on Twitter. You could just go with the handle Tax Tech NG. And for the NDPR Academy, just go with NDPR Academy on the score. Also on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn as well. Okay, let's really talk about the special tools the cyber criminals um, use to gain access to their victim's social media accounts. Are there any specific tools that they use, you know, to have access to these accounts? I've heard of people being hacked on Facebook, on Instagram, and all that. Someone else just takes over their account and begin to do stuff with this. See, how do these guys actually have access to these accounts? Thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. um, specific, there are technical tools um, cyber mm -hmm. criminals use to exploit systems and persons. But you may be surprised that some of the most effective tools these cyber criminals use to take over people's accounts are actually non-technical. How mm -hmm. do I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are used to using weak passwords. Weak it's passwords. Not necessarily, you understand. Sometimes yes. people use exposed, put too much information about, about themselves. People do not still realize that your date of birth can compromise I was, you. I was just about to mention that, you know, people you use the, I mean, the, the four birth. digits of yeah. your date of birth. Maybe you were born yeah, on 8th of you. April, you sometimes, use 0804 and stuff like that. The most simplest way to hack an account is not even to even know the password. Sometimes press wrong password. Mm. When the online service provider tells mm. you that, okay, you we, you we know that you don't know your password, we know that you don't know your recovery email, maybe mm. you've not even set it up. Yes. Confirm your date of birth. Oh, with that alone. Mm. If you want to get someone's date of birth, yes, Facebook allows you to block your date of birth. Well, you Fantastic. can go to the person wall and go and look for when someone wished the person happy birthday. Hmm, hmm. Mm, you understand? Mm. So there are so many techniques. So sometimes the non-technical techniques put people at risk. On the technical side, there are a number of tools cyber criminals use to harvest people's username and password from mm. unsecure Wi-Fi. Mm. That's why it is never advised to use 
public Wi-Fi, public computers for sensitive information, especially when you're going to exchange your credentials on those systems. Yes. Mm. So these are many more are some of the tools cyber criminals use. I would want to go into the length of them because of exposing names of tools. Okay. But there are a bevy of ways um, um, cyber criminals use to exploit systems. Mm. In to mitigate this, what users need to do is just to ensure that they comply to best practices. Best okay. practices such as don't put too much information about yourself on social media. It could lead mm. to your identity over hijacked. Why does Facebook need your mother's and um, your grandmother's name? Mm. Why does Facebook need to know your brother? Mm. Why does Facebook need to know where you work? Mm. You understand? Mm. So what extent, what benefit does it give to you as a person? Mm. Do not reveal too much about yourself, especially as we are in the pre-5G era in this part of the world, where yes. information theft, you can transfer a zillion amount of data in, in seconds. In seconds. You yeah. understand? Mm. And in, we are also in an era where botnets, cyber criminals exploit botnets to automate um, exploiting systems. What are botnets? Mm. These are... Pre- Sorry, did you, say bo- did you say botnets? B-O-T. Botnets. Bot, botnets. Bot, bot yes. Net. Yeah, B-O-T, yeah. Yes. Okay, bots, yes. Yes. Mm. Botnets are just networks or interconnected systems that have been pre-configured to do harm, cause chaos. Mm. Mm. You understand? So mm. these are more and many more techniques they use, um, cyber criminals use to implement social media cyber crimes. Fantastic. But a bulk of the solution to this problem rests with the user. And, and that user. simply means complying to best practices. Mm. Do not reveal too much of information on social media. Mm. Do not use unsecure Wi-Fi for your social media account. Mm. You understand? Mm. Do not accept unsolicited friend requests and a lot of them. Mm. Mm. All right, now that let's go to the next point there very quickly. So, is it is it actually possible to be like hundred percent secure from social media cyber crimes? Is it very very? Can people actually become practically immune to this? For example, in your case now, as an expert now, could you tell me that that it's not possible for anyone to hack into your account? Could you? I'm um, confidently say that. Can anybody really say that? Because I understand these uh, cyber criminals keep developing tools, keep coming with different strategies day by day to see how they can beat I won't, that system. I won't. Yeah, thank you for that question. Mm. I won't say it's 100% possible to secure your entire social media account. Mm. I will never tell you that no no system can guarantee you 100% security on yes. your system. You understand? Yes. All you can do is to employ best practices and ensure that what you're doing mm. meets standards. Mm. Even as a corporate entity, even as, an, uh, in, as a personal individual, mm. you understand? Yes. Enable two factor authentication. Exactly. Do not allow. Um, we are in an era where a lot of Instagram accounts are being hijacked. Mm. How do they get hijacked? Mm. Sometimes it's not simply because of lookalikes and pop ups. When mm. people download uh, malicious apps on their phone mm. or modified apps on their phone that are not from untrusted apps on their phone, mm. not from the Play Store, mm. and this thing in, install a lot of pop ups. You understand? But, but then, you know, some of these apps are actually on the Play Store. That's the funny thing about it. Some of these malicious yes, apps are right that, there. We that, download that, some of these even also, from the Play Store. That, that's also Google Play Store. The next, the next thing I was about to say, permissioning. Okay. Mm. One has to be, be careful about the level of permission apps request and mm. how you grant these apps access mm. to your data. Mm. For example, what does a news application need your messages for? Mm. Mm. You understand? So yes. this also leads to best practices. You understand? Yes. Governments mm. in this place need to come out to sensitize people. Yeah, Online service providers and banks are busy doing a part where most financial institutions are doing a lot in this regard. Yes. Sensitizing their customers not to divulge their PIN, mm-hmm. not to send out their uh, password, their mm-hmm. token mm-hmm. to people who claim to vision attack, who claim that they are from uh, legitimate persons. You understand? Yes. So yes. Um, I can tell you for sure, nobody is 100% secure. No mm-hmm. even antivirus can give you 100% security. security. Mm-hmm. So all what you can do is to employ an holistic approach. First, mm-hmm. Ensure we have a baseline of security for ourselves. Ensure mm. you have two factor authentication enabled for all your social media mm. accounts. Mm. Ensure you have a recovery email, a recovery number in case your account has been hijacked. Mm. You understand? Mm. And ensure that you don't expose too much information about yourself. Do not use free Wi Fi. It's mm. tempting, but it puts you at risk. Mm, you understand? Mm, fantastic. And these are many more ways you can yeah. use to keep yourself secure. Okay. App- apparently, you already answered my fourth question. There, I was going to ask that. What do you do in the event that you become hacked? Maybe somebody actually gains access to your social media accounts and all of that. 
you know, you've answered a bit of that already by telling us what we Thank need you. to do to prevent this. But now, what if when you now actually get act there, what do you do? When you become a victim, do you just forget about the account? I know there are people who have lost their accounts for some reason and they couldn't recover and they just left it. And I also know there are people who have actually recovered this account. So could you just briefly tell us what we need to do in the event that we fall no, victim? That's why, yeah, that's why most uh, in the world now and online serving pro- providers yes. have to define their incident reporting systems. Okay. Incident reporting systems of Facebook is as good as you identifying people you chat with and from that basic step you've started the recovery process of getting back your account. Oh, fantastic. Mm. So it's something that's actually new. Mm. Before once your account is taken over, you will need to go through a lengthy process before you can be giving that back to your account. Yes. But now, most online service providers are fit to find their incident reporting systems. And mm-hmm. they are, what are incident reporting systems? They are those systems that allow users to report abuse and misuse, mm-hmm. you understand? Mm-hmm. Or when they are being victim of breaches, you understand? Yes. You report the incident and they ask you two or three questions that you can validate and they give you back ownership of your account, yes. you understand? Mm-hmm. So that is the first effort of recovery, reporting the incident. Okay. Re- regardless of the social media channel you're using, mm-hmm. be okay. it WhatsApp, be it Facebook, be it mm-hmm. Instagram. But mm-hmm. more importantly, if you do things right in the first place, I don't think you Anyone will be actually act. Yes. Very true, very yes. true. Thank you so much. All right, um, before we go now, just some, there have been a few popular social media attacks like the Nigerian Prince, charity funds, blackmailing scams, and social hijacking. You just want to talk about one or two of this in a quick way before we now just combine and relate all this to the concept of data protection at, um, this, in general. This type of attack, in, in response to that, thank you for your question. This mm. type of attacks are actually have been a long time. I've been, uh, I'm sure they are even subject for people to study in schools, mm. especially Nigerian prints um, yes. and scam, where people create bogus letters telling you that they have a, this a, million of dollars in one account, in general and stuff. Money, you understand? <laughs> all those prints, all those things. Mm. Those things are actually a messy notes, you understand, because they have become mainstay. So mm. there's hardly anybody that you, you mentioned Nigerian prints, they really don't know about it. But mm. let's even look at Nigerian prints. There are more attacks, there are novel attacks that people should be more concerned about than the homoglyph attacks. Yes. Attacks that when they send you a lookalike link of Bank Nigeria, for instance, dot com, mm. you will not see any difference. But once you click on it, it's taking you to Hong Kong, it's taking mm. you to China, it's taking you to a malicious site. Mm. Homoglyph attacks. So, those are areas I feel um, sensitization effort needs to be stepped up mm. and um, all towards um, ensuring that we have a smooth cyber uh, level playing ground for all parties. Thank you so much. I guess that also a social hijacking, basically, where your social media account is taken over by someone else, which you already talked about before now. So let's just wrap yeah. it up with how do you relate this entire thing to data protection in the long run overall? Yeah, in relation to data protection, it's quite straightforward. Mm. The essence of my health data protection is to protect the way um, online service providers use and abuse um, data of Nigerians yes. you understand, mm. in their platform. We're in an era where people um, use people's data for database marketing mm-hmm. without them knowing. Mm. We, are, we are in an era where people use your data to favor an people, election, uh, political, an electoral uh, opponent over yes. and other. Mm. Like the case we saw with Cambridge Analytica yes. during Jonathan era. Yes. Never was it known that Nigerians were being misguided by tailored adverts sponsored mm. by um, a Facebook agency company mm. to discredit one political opponent over the other. Mm. You, these are the lengths social media cyber crimes can go, mm. you understand? Yes. And um, in relation to data protection, it's important Nigerian businesses comply with the tenets of NDPR yes. and mm. um, going forward because it's going to do a lot in protecting not just our future because data is a currency for the modern age. Okay. And mm. what do I mean when I say data is a currency for the modern age? Your data tells it all. Your data tells how much you spend. Your mm-hmm. data tells the site you visit. Your data can be used to tailor marketing adverts to you. Yes. Your data can be used to tailor financial, how you spend. A lot of things. You understand? Mm-hmm. Even your health. Mm-hmm. You understand? So 
data is the new oil and going mm. forward we are not going to see less of that mm. so in this light it is a good effort by uh, Mixda to mm. uh, to ensure that more vital business organizations i know they've started with the banks and mm. they are looking at pushing it out for other sensitive in, in areas of the economy mm. industries rather yes. so it's all about protecting nigeria data it cannot be overemphasized but it's all in this it's a good step in the right direction for our future. Thank you very much, Mr. Rockadote. It's been a very, very interesting Thank one you, and very enlightening one. Thank you very much. I'm sure we're still going to be seeing more of you on um, the Privacy Notes podcast from time to time. We'll keep bringing you in whenever we have issues we think you will go away on and bring your expert opinion on. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you once again. All right. So this is the Privacy Notes. We'll be back after this break. Um, this is the privacy note. It's good to know you're still here. We've had a long conversation there with Rock Adote, a cybersecurity expert, and it's been a very insightful one. Summary of what I could gather from this is the fact that most of the solutions, I mean, the way you can actually avoid the cyber crimes on your social media platforms actually rest with you, the user. Basic, how much information do you have about yourself on social media? Be careful about the unsolicited friend requests you take. And do you have a multi-factor or better, or better still a two-factor authentication, you know, enabled on your devices? Do you download malicious apps? And what are the permissions you grant to some of these apps when you use them? These are the things we need to be very, very careful about. We've been looking at how you can detect and checkmate the various types of social media cyber crimes. The conversation continues. You could always reach out to us on any of our social media platforms or even on our website, www.taxtech.com.ng. On NDPR Academy, you could also reach out to us on www.ndpracademy.ng. Next week, we're going to be taking this further with a new topic. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure being with you today. Hopefully, we'll see you next week.